So we're introduced today, uh, uh, hopefully not the first time you're introduced to Jonah, but we're introduced to Jonah and we're introduced to the Queen of the South and the people of Nineveh. And these characters in the Old Testament and in the gospel reading. And so what was Nineveh? Nineveh was a pagan city, the enemies of Israel. Who was Jonah? Jonah was a good Israelite who wanted to see Nineveh destroyed. God called Jonah to preach to Nineveh. He did not want to go. He ran away, got thrown off the boat, swallowed by the whale, spit back on the shore, go do your job, and Jonah. And he went and did his job reluctantly, but he went and he said to the people of Nineveh, repent. And what did they do? They repented. They repented and God spared them. And who was the Queen of the South? The Queen of the South was a, a character, again, in the Old Testament, who was from far away, south of, south of the Holy Land. And she heard about this wise, wise king, Solomon. And she said, I'm going to make a pilgrimage to go visit Solomon. And she went you know, it's not easy necessarily to make a pilgrimage. So she, she, she took the time and the energy and the effort to go search out Solomon. And then she heard Solomon's wisdom and she's like convicted and impressed and transformed by the wisdom of Solomon. And so the queen of the South hears the wisdom of the Old Testament. The people of Nineveh hear the preaching of Jonah and they're transformed. And Jesus says, I'm greater than Solomon, which would have been a big deal for him to say. I'm greater than Solomon, and I'm a better preacher than Jonah. And the people of Nineveh and the Queen of the South, they know what they got and it transformed them and you're getting something better and you're not being changed. So that's kind of an explanation of what's happening there in the gospel. So how many times have I told you that we're not, we did not gather here this morning to, to uh, look down our nose at those poor people that Jesus was talking to, right? We're being talked to by Jesus today. It's Jesus speaking to us. Jesus saying to us, the people were convicted by the wisdom of the Old Testament, but there is something greater here. You just have to turn and listen. It's not far away. It's not across the sea. It's not up in the sky. It's not like who's going to come tell us. Jesus says, I'm here. The grace of God is, is present in the world. The call to repentance the wisdom of the church, the teachings of sacred scripture, the beauty of the gospel. And so my brothers and sisters in Christ, repent. Repent, do penance. That's what it means to repent. Do penance. What kind of penance are we gonna do? Well, what am I gonna say now? Pray and fast and give because you are attached to the pleasures of the flesh. You are attached to your things and you are attached to kind of daydreaming and your phone and the television and this, that, and the next thing. And God wants you to be attached to him. So pray and fast and give and, and make up your mind today anew. Make up your mind a day, today anew. Lord, shower upon me the grace of repentance. Lord, help me repent. Maybe you don't know exactly what repent means. Maybe you don't know exactly what that looks like in your life, in your daily life. Lord, help me today. 
I don't want, and I can see, speak for myself here, I do not want the Queen of the South, when I'm getting judged by the Lord, to say, boy, he dropped the ball. <laughs> I don't want the people of Nineveh to say, you had everything, and, and we had nothing, and we repented. So we hear this story today, and we pray for the grace that we would, re the grace to repent is here. We pray that we would respond to the grace of repentance and transformation uh, during the Lenten season and, and for, throughout our lives.